What is going on guys? Welcome to episode number 62 of our Cincinnati Reds franchise. 86 and 76. We finished off the regular season just by the hair of our chinny chin chin to get into this game against the San Francisco Giants. You guys can see that we tied in record. There's actually a five-way tie going into the last game of the season. And luckily, we had some help. We won, and then other teams in front of us also lost. So we get into the play-in round one game to get into the wild card round, which is yet again, you guessed it, one game. So we got some back-to-back -back elimination games here, and we got Dallas Keuchel on the mound against this San Francisco Giants team that a lot of people are really ripping on for being a little bit too old. So we can see their lineup here did not get much younger in the 2021 season. A lot of the same familiar faces, Buster Posey, Joe Panic, Brandon Crawford. We see Charlie Blackman here taking his cuts against Dallas Keuchel, and he's going to fly out to Taylor Trammell out there in center field. But... A lot of familiar faces. Brandon Belt is still on the team. We got Pablo Sanchez there at catcher. I'm trying to think of anybody else. Evan Longoria at third. And then we got Andrew McCutcheon coming up here at right field. So this team is pretty much the same, the same cast of characters here. So we're trying to utilize our youth to try to take out these old guard San Francisco Giants. Here we can see that Nick Senzel does not get credited for the error, does not get charged for the error, but he is going to bobble that that baseball into left field. But luckily, his pitcher picks him up here. That's Dallas Keuchel striking out the batter. Now we get Ty Block going up against us in the offensive department here. We see that Trey Turner gets on to second base. That is off of a infield single, and then he ended up stealing second off of a bad pickoff throw from Ty Block. So he, do, he does get into second base to score position right there to start off the bottom of the first. We see Joey Votto going to pop out, which is something that he does not ever do. And then Paven Smith follows that up with a strikeout. So we are done in the first inning with nothing doing. And we see Nick Senzel getting a chance out there at third base to kind of redeem himself. So good stuff there. We do get out of the inning. Nick Senzel comes up in the bottom of the second and he strikes out against Ty Block. He's very slow. Ty Block is a very, very slow pitcher. So we got to wait back a little bit longer because we're getting a little too eager when we see that slow thing moving in on us. So Taylor Trammell adjusts nicely. And since we know that Ty Block is not the fastest hurler in the world, we get good jumps. Taylor Trammell gets a good jump there. He's going to get a stolen base credited to him in this game. So two and one for Tyler Stevenson, the starting catcher now. And he's going to send a Line drive back up the middle to Charlie Blackman, and Trammell is going to challenge Blackman's arm, and he's not even going to attempt it, guys. Trammell scores. It's going to be one to nothing Cincinnati early in this game here in the bottom of the second. So let's jump ahead here real quick. We're going to go to the top of the order for San Francisco. We're still doing really well here. Dallas Keuchel shutting these Giants down. Still one to nothing game here. Sanchez grounds out yet again to Nick Senzel. That's the second time that he's done that on this game. So he really likes that left side. Here's Shaw. That is not Brian Shaw or Travis Shaw. Excuse me, Brian Shaw is a pitcher. Travis Shaw would be the third baseman slash second baseman slash first baseman for the Milwaukee Brewers, at least as far as 2018 goes. We see an insanely good play out there by second baseman Scooter Jeanette. So really athletic play. Gotta love that. Tyler Stevenson comes up in the bottom of the fifth inning. And look at this. The throw was high and wide, a little bit wide. So Stevenson promptly dives and slides into first base, knowing full well that Brandon Belt would have had to jump for the baseball. Really smart play by him. So we're going to get runners on first and second as Scooter Jeanette gets a single to left field going the opposite way. Dallas Keuchel lays a bunt down to move the runners over with less than two outs. Very smart. And then we get Trey Turner coming up trying to drive these guys in. At least a fly ball is all you need. And he's actually going to pop out to the shortstop, Brandon Crawford. So not what you would have liked to see from Trey Turner right there. So we're going to get Jesse Winker up, who's been clutch for at least a good two to three seasons for us right now. And he's going to come up with a nothing-nothing count. And look at this. This pitch just, just hovered right in Winker's wheelhouse there. And we got Jeanette challenging Blackman and the relay. And he's going to get in. So it's going to be a two-run double or two-run single, excuse me. So we're up three to nothing. Let's go to the top of the seventh, though, and things are starting to get a little shaky. 
Little bit shaky here. Keiko, 59 pitches right now, so he's like cruising. He's cruising, but that home run is kind of getting me a little worried. And, and, and the Cincinnati faithful here in the stands. As we can see, Winker actually comes in for the baseball when it was a line drive, just went over his head. So, of course, we get a double on us. That's McCutcheon. And then we get Brandon Belt coming up here to challenge Taylor Trammell up in center field. And look at this. McCutcheon is going to slide in safe. So Trammell gave it everything he had. It just wasn't enough. So it's going to be 3-2 to two with Evan Longoria up with nobody down, guys. Finally, finally, we get an out in this inning. It's going to be a strikeout. That was a high and outside fastball to Longoria. I just couldn't do anything with it. Hector Sanchez comes up, and we get a pop-out into foul territory. Joey Votto is going to get that one. So we got two down now, 77 pitches. It's not like his pitch count's terrible, right? He's still doing pretty well here in the top of the seventh inning. Winker makes a great play down the line in order to get us out of this little bit of a mini jam here. So here's Tyler Stevenson, and look at this line drive to deep left field, left center field shot, guys. Bye bye, baby. Tyler Stevenson with a 413 foot home run for his 11th on the season. And we get at least a run back. The Giants scored two in that inning to cut the lead to one. Now we got the lead back to two. So Stevenson has two RBIs already on this baseball game. And he's coming up clutch. So here's Ryan Franks. We got Dallas Keuchel, who was scheduled to come up. But Ryan Franks, the 19 year old, sensational young player here going to come up and get an at-bat. We like his numbers against right-handed pitching as far as contact and power goes, even though the, the average won't show you much here with a 143 since his call-up. He's still a really good hitter, as you guys are well aware of this by now watching his statistics here. But look at this deep gap shot going to go over Charlie Blackman's head. He was disrespecting Ryan Franks here, the youngster. Nice job there to get a double with one down. Look at this beautiful swing by Franks. Nice little nice little turn of the shoulder, bring it back, bring the hands back to the catcher and then just let it rip. I love it. It's like you're pulling the lawnmower. <laughs> Got to love it. So here's Trey Turner and he's going to strike out. He's just he's not having a good, a good game here, guys. So he's going to be the second out in the top of the, uh, the bottom of the 7th and then we get Jesse Winker going to try to get at least some some wood on the baseball here, but nothing going to happen. So it was a good call to get Ryan Franks in that bat, but you know he did his job. The rest of the guys just couldn't pick him up. So here's Michael Lorenzen going to come on in relief so that Ryan Franks doesn't have to throw. <laughs> Even though the Ohio native probably can do it all at this point since he's 19 and he's doing stuff here at the major league level. We're going to get a single by Ryder Jones, but check this out. Lorenzen gets a much-needed ground ball out there to Trey Turner, who flips it over to Jeanette over to Votto for the double play. So Lorenzen comes on, does his job. We're now going to go with Danny Norris against the lefty Joe Panic. And on the first pitch of the at bat, Panic is swinging, gets a fly ball, an easy fly ball out there to Winker, who makes the play. So, did you guys see Norris's stats, by the way? His splits between lefty hitters and righty hitters? 220 batting averages each. Love it. That's really why you guys are going to see him actually come on in the top of the ninth instead of Andrew Miller, because I, I just love what Danny Norris has been doing against both sides of the plate. I really do, So I, with opponent batting average. So we're going to see how he does here in the top of the ninth, and if things get sticky, we're definitely going with Andrew Miller for sure. So here's Charlie Blackman. Keep in mind, Norris still has only one pitch on the on the game for him, or this appearance, and Charlie Blackman on the first pitch of his at-bat is going to be swinging. He gets a single. So a little bit sticky here, but we can still get a double play. Three and two count here against Andrew McCutcheon and a curveball low and away is not going to catch the corner. So Brandon Belt going to come on. And now it's Andrew Miller time. We've got to get some outs here. We've got to get out of this inning to finish the game off. And Brandon Belt is going to left a fly ball out there to center field. Trammell is going to take care of it. And challenging is Charlie Blackman, which is a pretty smart play. So he's going to get to third base, right? Evan Longoria coming up here. He's going to swing and a miss. 
going to be 0-2 on Andrew Miller with four pitches so far on the inning. Keep in mind, runners on the corners were still in a situation for a double play ball. I got to shoot for that, but we get a fly ball out there to Winker. Winker camps underneath it, gets momentum behind it, and look at Blackman is challenging to home, and he's going to score. So now is it starting to get really, really interesting here, right? Two down, runners on first base. Foul ball, this is Hector Sanchez. He's grounded out to Nick Senzel constantly all game here. So we're shooting to try to jam him on the inside a little bit, and he does just that. Senzel gathers it, throws over to second base. Guys, your Cincinnati Reds are the one-game playoff winners, and now we're going to be advancing over to the wild card round against an unknown opponent. I will show you guys that in just a few moments. But, guys, this, what an incredible run for the Cincinnati Reds team. The youngsters have really stepped up in this last month of the season to, to really push and make the, this playoff run. I'm excited to go forward and see what this team has in it. I really, really am. We didn't get it done last year, but we are getting it done this year. I think the team is really taking a step forward, and this, this is really boding well for future seasons because the younger we are and the more success we're having, the better the progression rate's gonna be, and obviously, you know, it's gonna become a dynasty at this point. I hope, I hope, we can only hope. So there's your playoff bracket. We actually get to play the St. Louis Cardinals for this one game wild card. I'll see you guys next Friday. As always, go Reds and peace.